Okay, now, I know Barbara Crown is waiting, and she's waiting patiently over there because she has some inflammatory information that she's about to dose with water. And, uh, okay, so Barbara, tell us what, tell us what, you've, uh, what you've come across. Well, what I'd like to do is, is clarify misunderstanding. Uh, and it has to do with the Nibian Professional Hunting Association. Uh, last September, they sent out a release uh, basically putting everyone on notice that their association was going to take a very hard line uh, with operators in Namibia who were either operating illegally uh, or say operators who aren't licensed and registered in Namibia uh, and operators who are legally licensed but are cutting corners and doing illegal hunts or illegal activities. Uh, in that release, they mentioned uh, that they would be reporting to other law enforcement uh, organizations, including the, obviously the, the Namibian uh, Ministry of Environment, but also agencies like U.S. Fish and Wildlife, and they indicated that there could be problems with um, uh, the Lacey Act uh, for hunters who were involved in those hunts. Well, my goodness. Uh, there has just been a, a, all kinds of back and forth angry emails, angry postings, uh, particularly on a very popular and uh, well-known and uh, used web, um, uh, online forum uh, that I'm sure you know, Accurate Reloading, which has great information on it, is a great source to be able to talk back and forth with hunters uh, and uh, different people from different countries on hunting in their areas. Now, uh, but now, now before you go any, before you go any further though Barbara you and I both because it's part of our duty to search around the internet go to newspapers around the world we are looking for information that's either accurate or inaccurate and stepping in to kind of correct that now I, I I like accurate reloading it's a great website I, I go yes. there for lots of information and, and I enjoy so go I, I don't participate that often but I am a member there. Now, and when these things start in an erroneous form like that, I think we need to jump in there and make sure that that misinformation is not continued. Because a lot of people, just like in your emails, you receive emails that are either too old or have nothing to do with anything. We have to stop that. And I think, Barbara, you've done a wonderful job of picking up on this one. I missed it, and I was in there. So, I mean, I, I missed it. So, uh, I mean, good job on your part, Barbara. And I'm sure that those folks out there at Accurate Reloading will even appreciate the fact that we are now correcting that. I, I hope so. And, and, again, it just goes back to a misunderstanding about what NAFA is trying to accomplish. And I was there. I was in Namibia last month, and I spoke with... Uh, Dethel Metzger, the president of NAFA, I spoke directly with uh, the CEO of NAFA, uh, Almut Crossbein. I spoke with Marina uh, Lamprecht, who is also uh, high up in the organization. And I spoke directly face-to-face -face with the director of Parks and Wildlife for the, the Ministry of Environment, uh, Mr. Ben Batel. And we were all on the same page about illegal hunting that occurs not just in Namibia but all over Africa and the effects of this kind of activity it is bad for our industry it is bad for hunters it is bad all the way around it provides uh, ammunition for the anti-hunters it provides reasons for US Fish and Wildlife to deny import permits for places like the Nyasa Reserve in Mozambique um, it is bad for hunters because these operators are putting hunters at risk, both legally and financially, and it has to stop. And one of the things that I discussed with NAFA and with FAZA in South Africa during my trip there was a collaboration in outing these bad operators. So I am going to be working very closely with these two organizations, and I hope to extend that to other professional hunting organizations uh, that are truly interested in policing their industry and in keeping the bad apples out or throwing the bad apples yeah. out. Uh, I'm going to be sharing complaints from my subscribers 
about these operators so that they can look at them and see if there's a trend developing. And they're going to be sharing with me information on operators who are caught doing illegal activities and found guilty of them, operators who are being kicked out of the organization for these activities, operators who are losing their licenses because of these activities. And I'm going to make it public. I'm going to go out there and I will let the uh, hunting uh, community know about these operators because they need to be out of business. And, and, we, are, and we, we, we want to be a part of that also, Barb. Uh, it, it, when you come across those and, and you're on the show every week, then let's get it out there. I, I mean, you guys do a wonderful job. And, and in fact, you, you've sort of been doing this with Hunter Reports from different areas yes, where hunters actually come in and, and they comment on, on the hunt that they've been on. I, I don't know that you've ever brought all that information together and I assume that's what you're going to do now. You're going to bring that information together, study it, analyze it, verify it, and if there is something about a particular outfitter, now correct me anytime I'm wrong, but if there is a problem with a particular outfitter, I feel certain that you are going to expose that, and, and certainly we will help you right here on the show. We've done it in the past, but, but I know that we'll be able to find, you're probably going to create a new section in, in, in the hunting report. Well, actually, James, it's something that I've, I've done for a while now. Yeah. And, and let me make a distinction between there being a, something that went wrong on a hunt and something that is just plain illegal. Mm -hmm. uh, lots of including personality conflicts, um, things that are out of sorts. That's not what I'm talking about here, although no, it is no, something no. that I, I have covered in the newsletter. Uh, we cover that regularly in the good, the bad, and the ugly section right, of right. the hunting report. Every right. single month you will find reports about right. hunts that went wrong, why they went wrong, mm. what the operator right. responds about what went wrong. But this, in, this thing in particular that we're talking about now is operators who are just they're just bad. They right, are right, operating right. illegally. They are doing things that are putting hunters at legal risk. Right. And what everybody needs to understand, when NAFA was refer referring to reporting to U.S. Fish and Wildlife and the possibility of Lacey Act violations, guys, you need to understand, U.S. Fish and Wildlife doesn't care if you didn't know. Right. If you hunt with an operator that did something illegally on your hunt, that makes your trophy illegal, and upon importing it into the United States, you are enacting the Lacey Act, and it is a felony. There are serious, serious consequences, starting with up to $250,000 in fines and five years in prison. That's right. You lose your civil rights. That means you lose your ability to have guns. This is serious stuff. Right. Now, the igno ignorance of the no. law, ignorance of the law here, Barbara, is not an excuse. And I think that's what you're turning out. That's what you're really trying to tell us. Correct? Yeah, that's what I'm warning right, right, guys right, about. Right, right. It, you know, anybody can, can fall victim. A lot of people write me all the time about operators that they've fallen victim to, right. bad operators they've fallen victim to. Right, and, and, there and, are and, and that's the reason why, Barbara, that you do what you do and we do what we do. We will try to get as much informa information out there as we can. Now listen, I gotta end this on a pleasant note. Do you remember a few weeks ago, well, I don't know, it was a few weeks ago, five or six weeks ago, we talked about the fact that if you didn't go to deer hunting in Kansas, you were going to miss out on taking a, did you not say that? Yes, I did. Hey, guess what? <laughs> guess what? Here comes a picture. I'm going to show you. I'm going to take you away a minute, Barbara, because here comes a picture of a deer that was taken in Kansas, and you should be jealous. Look at that magnificent yes. animal. <laughs>